Greetings everyone, this is Spartan275, Captain of the Victor Velvetinis, and welcome to the LDL Season 7 Week 12 Power Rankings. Uh, I have, I'm not alone, I have a special guest with me, you can go ahead and say hi. What a do, players and trainers, it is your boy, the Blazing Squid. Alright, and now I uh, want to inform that we did skip Week 11, mostly basically because of time and constraints people have jobs uh, have school and some just uh, wasn't up for it so we'll be covering a quick rundown before we begin with the week 11 matches for for the first one it was Jordan versus Matt which Jordan won his game uh, Shea versus Carlos where Carlos won his game Alejandro versus DJ where Alejandro won his game Brennan, Brandon versus Brandon, which Brennan won his game. Uh, me versus Squid, and Squid won his game. Uh, Arthur versus Steven, Arthur won his game. Trick versus Chris, which Chris won his game. And Mark versus Jesse, which Mark won his game. Um, there were a few pre pretty much interesting games. One of them, I mean, two of them that really stuck out the most were. Uh, in my opinion, Mark and Jesse's and Jordan and Matt's, they were very close games, but uh, there it was nothing much close. to say uh, much about these games. They were either really close or just didn't turn out the way they wanted it to be. Um, there any upsets? Not really. Uh, there was one, but we'll get you to that know. later. So there was, there was one, but we'll discuss that later. So let's go on to right now, which is week 12. So now we have uh, the following games that have been played through. The first one was Steven versus Trick, which Steven won his game with a 5-0. Uh, Chris versus Mark, which Mark won with a 3-0. Jesse versus Shea, which Jesse won, if I'm not mistaken, with a 4-0. Uh, uh. Brandwood versus Arthur, which Arthur won with a 1-0. Uh, Brandon versus me, which I won with a 3-0. DJ versus Brandon, and which DJ surprisingly won with a 1-0 game. Matt versus Alejandro, with Matt won winning with a 5-0. And Carlos versus Jordan, which Carlos won with a 5-0. These games were either very close or very one-sided. And then there were like a couple that were like right in between. Is there any uh, anything you want to say? Uh, just overall, pretty surprising week, I would say. Um, and in some retrospects, or yeah, people can work on it, but uh, being that so late into the playoff, like where you see teams just come up on the bowl and some just conquer, and the LDL. Yeah, I, for sure. So let's go down and, and uh, break down through the standings as of right now uh, for the power rankings. So first up we have is Trig uh, from Kansas City Kingler. Um, I don't know what to say about this game because when I watched this game, it went from it went downhill for him. Uh, like. For instance, he had a, a misclick in turn on the second turn that really cost his screen user, uh, and then he did a lot of very unsafe sure. setups because, and then the game, uh, Steven had a lot of mods that he had a few mods that actually disrupted the setups a lot. Um, there were also very questionable switch-ins that uh, Trig went through, such as uh, sending in stack attack on an Excadrill, in which could, Excadrill could have easily clicked an Earthquake and probably took it down, or an Iron Head. So, even... I don't know, and he was also overreading a lot of the match uh, in this match, so I don't know what to say about it. However, he did bring like a very unique set of Z Belly Drum Clefable, which gave me a, a couple of chuckles. But other than that, Tri uh, 
Patrick uh, has a lot to improve, especially this late in the game. He may not be in playoffs, but he should try his best to tr to improve himself overall. Is there anything you want to say about uh, how Trig played through? Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, Trig still has some area of improvement. I I know I'm prepping for him since we have to face tomorrow. Um, but yeah, the the Z belly drill. Interesting, especially with the fact that he was showing meter mash and he was clicking it against of a Boreon, mm -hmm. like any other move could have been so much better. Like, uh, I'm not sh I'm pretty sure Clefable gets a wide moveset, like, it, it does, or it, even a return would have been so much better. I hope having to go for Meteor Dash, yeah, I told whole wholeheartedly agree on that for sure. And before you come, Vaporeon was such a trick to really get through because his only check for it was actually the Manetric. Outside of the Manetric, you really had nothing else with a Vaporeon. So just trying to cover everything that you can cover, Trick. Like, Meteor Mash, uh, he has Extra Drill, he has Rotom. It's not the best. So really just analyzing things like that. Like, how can you cover a team best overall? I agree. Um, another thing uh, I would say that if you want to trick, if you want to try to use a belly drum uh, set with Clefable, you should try doing it uh, previously before it became a fairy type. Because if it was a normal type, you would easily run maybe a facade or a turn of frustration for a nice stab. But Clefable does not have any uh, physical uh, fairy stab to benefit it. So all in all. Try to uh, think outside of the uh, of the box another time. So, yeah. All right. So next up is Alejandro, uh, number fifteen of the Lakewood Trevents. I was I was kind of sad that uh, Alejandro lost to this 5-0, uh, especially with the fact that he was using one of the worst moves in the game, Magma Storm. Magma Storm having a hundred a hundred damage uh, special attack with only eight, eight PP, but only a seventy five percent chance of hitting. So if you miss that Magma Storm, you're really costing the game. And it really, not only that, he lost a lot of his core. He lost the the, um, the Mega Venusaur so early because of uh, of Mega Sharpedo. He lost his Heatran. In, he lost. He even lost his uh, his own slow bro near the end, and it was kind of just. It was just hard for him to bring it back. I mean, he did have signal beam on slow bro, which surprised me. But I was surprised he didn't stay in because I'm I'm pretty sure that slow bro slow bro in a bulky defensive set would survive a crunch from Mega Sharpedo. If it wasn't adamant, if I'm not mistaken, but if it was adamant, it probably would have went down. Um, he also had uh, what uh, Z heat, heat Wave. I was surprised that he used that, but it was it was kind of too late for it to bring it back, and especially with. Uh, when he brought in Mammoth Swine in front of Raikou, he should, he w the best thing he would have done when he first said it uh, brought it in was attack instead of switched out, because it was just inviting him to easily bring in another calm mine on Raikou. And he also probably expected our spear on Raikou, even though the only time. The only type of Raikou that you can able to use Aura Spear is a Rast Nature Shiny one from the event uh, years ago. So I don't know. I, I was kind of I was kind of disappointed that uh, Alejandro lost that one. Is there anything else you want to say about uh, Alejandro and his game plan? Get to watch this one. So oh, unfortunately, I don't have any feedback. All right, that's that's okay. Um, yeah. It, I don't know. I, I think he could have pulled pulled through, maybe even made it a closer game, but I was that was kind of very unfortunate. 
Um, moving on to Jordan and the Clairefield Char Charmanders. Uh, I was, this is one of the games that he lost through RNG, which really screwed him over because double crit on Gren really costed him the double crit on Gren plus missing Will-O-Wisp really cost him the game like heavily. Um, uh, yeah, a pro and also near the end where he had Garchomp near the uh. He could have easily clicked out uh, instead of Outrage Earthquake, which uh, Earthquake would have able to run through most of uh, Carlos's team without Zapdos. But at the same time, I can understand that it was near a losing game. But that was my opinion. Um, I mean, he did have a good, uh, like good chance of uh, taking down the mill tank if it wasn't for the cr double crits because he was lean using taunt and it prevented from stealth rocks from being uh, on the field prevent from talonflame from losing gale wings but even so it it was all about the crits to be honest that really cost him the, and got him the uh the loss uh, is there anything you want to say yeah no i agree uh I don't know, that the first turn, I think he had Silvali Ice, was it? Yeah, Silvali Ice. It probably was. No, no, it wasn't Silvali Ice, it was so Scarf Silvali. Because, uh... To outspeed the, the Duck Hero. Most definitely. So that crit mattered, like... I'm, I'm like, wow, that's super unfortunate. Yeah, um... It's, uh, it's a sad way to lose, especially to RNG. But at the same time, I faced... Funny, so he landed every single hit. So it's like bound to happen that it's either 50 50 it's gonna either go your way or it's gonna go against your way two offensive teams really going at it like they were both super offensive and that's how it is when you face Jordan. you have to bring offense versus offense mm -hmm. race your walls but both players played it played it right they played it well it's just some had more fortunate packs on their side than others and and held him back. Yeah, for sure. Especially that that Willow miss was really huge. Yeah, uh, but we all we may never know if it was a Lumberry Metagross or not. So we we want to know if it uh, if it mattered. All right. Who knows. All right. All right. So let's move on to uh, Shay and the Lake Erie Gyarados. This matchup was, I would say it was more in Shay's favor, but also at the same time, there were a lot of plays that he could have done better. Like for instance, sacking Volcarona in front of a Darmanitan, which Darmanitan has like so much uh, attack stat while Volcarona doesn't have the greatest defense or HP. Uh, so. I was surprised that he let it die, even though he had a plus two in, uh, in special attack. He used um, fiery dance instead of maybe bug buzz or probably a coverage move. But losing Volcarona really cost him the game. Another thing that him was him using, uh, I want to think using knockoff with Whimsicott would would be the greatest idea. In my opinion, having moves like a status effect moves and whatnot would have made it made Whimsicott a little bit better. Another thing would have been uh, missing the first Leech Seed because that one uh, would have helped him out late, uh, later on in the game. And but uh, I do commend him for using a physical Latias to counter the Mega Alakazam, but. He was using Dragon Claw under Missy Terrain, which halves the damage on uh, of Dragon type uh, moves on grounded t on grounded Mons, which I guess he uh, probably misunderstood uh, it and costs. Not only that, uh, not only uh, knocking out Mega Alakazam so easily, 
but also um, later on when he brought in oh, when Jesse brought in Masquerade instead of attacking it because it would most likely have been Sash, he actually ended up switching out, allowing it uh, to get a plus uh, a plus one with Quiver Dance, uh, allowing it to uh, uh, to defeat Shay uh, uh, for Jesse to defeat Shay. So I don't know it. it he had he had the mons to to win it all, but I I don't know. I don't know what to say. Hmm. Well I will have to say is he just has to really just work on his coverage moves, as you mentioned. Um he could have really capitalized on Jesse's misplays, especially him getting up to Smithy Trains and trying to get the toxic offs. Completely forgetting about the Misty Trains. But uh, I, I think this was a mistake he also had last week, which was he's he's really rich with the Brokorona. I, from Brokorona, all I've seen is really Quiver Dance and I've seen Fiery Dance. Mm -hmm. But a simple Hidden Power Ground or Hidden Power Rock for the Darmanitan would have been a huge shooting changer. Probably even Hidden Power Ground. So when you hit the mask with the Mask uh you have the Bug Buzz for the Alakazam. You have fiery dance for the rest of the team like s just simple things like that legit could be a huge game changer not sure how shay is dealing with coverage but it's something that he really could just a bit of tweak to his prep can really change his whole outcome yeah i agree and i hope that shay yeah i don't know if that's the best either I don't know if it's the best, but it was very interesting uh, for him to use. I wasn't expecting that at all. <laughs> uh, well, anyways, uh, let's... For the exam. Yeah. So let's move on to one of the most upset games that I've ever seen. With Chris and Miss Midwest with Miltank. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna chew you out, Chris. You had the win. I had. I'm saying this right now. You had the win. You had a Omni boosted Mega Charizard Y out on the field, ready to destroy Mark, and you clicked Solar Beam. You clicked Solar Beam on Halucha. I understand that you uh about ac the accuracy of Air Slash B not being 100%. And whatnot, but still, stab is sta stab, and it is if it's super effective, go for it. Don't be afraid of it missing. Don't be afraid of it not killing. Click that stab move. Click the air slash. You had the win. It, but you also did. I don't know. You, there was a very questionable moves choices as well. Like when you had a uh, Mega Charizard in front of uh, a Tapu Bulu. And instead of clicking maybe flamethrower, you clicked solar beam on it, and I was very question questioning like why. So I don't know. And then you had to end up sacking Logan so soon, which really would have made a difference, especially with like sleep powder and being in the sun, able to sweep through, and also uh, having. Uh, Losing Clef Clefkey's uh, soul later in the game really cost uh, cost you uh, cost Chris like the win, and I uh, was surprised he didn't have or or maybe he did have Wish, but I didn't see him use Wish at all in that game with Umbreon. So all in all, I don't know. He had the win. He had the win, but he lo Chris, why? You had the win. Do you have anything to say about this? I really agree. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to be talking about where Mark messed up. You, you truly, you had a chance from the Axe Gods. Agent Power Boost. You have, like, such a clear win, and you somehow, like, truly... I, I remember all the admins were like, why did Chris go for Solar Beam? understood that play my dude i just it's a work i understand you probably work got you a little confused 
mumbo jumbo. But I really hope that he can try to learn from this mistake and from the future reference. Just really capitalize on on moves like that on, on your choice selection, my dude. Because a simple air slash truly could have won the game. I a, a simple air slash. I wholeheartedly agree on that. Because even with that uh, with that plus one, you would have survived an ex uh, at least two extreme speeds from uh, Bandit uh, Entei. So. Yeah, with more HP. Yeah. So, just saying, Chris. Always go for the stab. Don't be afraid of missing. And now, let's move on to... Uh, Let's move on, uh, guys. We got a lot to cover. Uh, next up is Moon, uh, Brandon and the Moon Valley Mewtwo. So this one, this game went very from north to south when I was playing them. Uh, he had a very uh, offensive uh, Mega Sableye with Sucker Punch and Knockoff, but when it got toxic. It really screwed him over because once a Mega Sableye either gets poisoned or badly poisoned, it becomes hard to use because that poison is just going to get racked up and racked up and it's going to be hard to recover. And if you didn't have like a Heal Bell user, it's not going to keep it, a, a, it's not going to stay. It's just going to end up being a, a complete sack. Um. Also, uh, with the use of sticky webs, it didn't really help out the uh, in uh, in Brandon's game that much uh, because I had like two mons to switch in, and one of them had defog. So I don't know. It, I don't know if sticky web was the choice. And for Articuno. I was surprised he didn't click freeze dry instead of ice beam because freeze dry would hit everything except for Cobalion. Um, he also tried to out predict a lot of my moves, especially when uh, he had choice band Jirachi but and Eviolite Rhydon, and but instead of keeping the uh, the Rhydon in the game. Uh, w and near the end on my Cinnaroar, he switched out as I landed a knockoff, killing it. So I was very questionable about that one. Anything you have to say? Um, yeah, uh, I would like to add that um, you and I are going through the same problem, which is our leads. Uh, the Articuno lead versus the Cobalion, like step back i think your best lead would have probably been the right on which you did bring up later but at that point he got free rocks up mm -hmm. he chipped damage he wanted with cabalia and potentially even got a flinch with iron edge and stuff like that but capitalizing on leads can really be a game changer you could have you know uh prevented rocks maybe you could have scared him out just probably work on that and then as he was mentioning uh, don't make such hard reads like the incinero was right there you could have easily knocked it out with an earthquake you lost your draw to and that was like one win con you potentially lost to try to come back uh but really just when you were at the pre team previews really capitalize on what's your best lead i think Articuno is your best lead i know he has a glide score but I'm pretty sure Eric, he, he realized, oh, he has our Kuno. Let me just lead off my rocks. Hey, simple as that. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> because I actually thought he would have been Choice Scarf and they had U-Turn. Because if he had Scarf U-Turn, I could understand. But he didn't go for uh, U-Turn. So I, I, I guess I assumed it was Specs, I guess. So I, I, I wouldn't know. Uh, so, um, all right, so now let's move up to, uh, to Steven, AKA Ratty Blue Wizard and the Russville Rockets. Um, I was actually surprised that he actually won that game, uh, how well he played through it. 
with especially with Vaporeon taking on taking down three of his mons, uh, th three of uh, Jordan's mons, and just staying in is just such a bulky mon. <laughs> yeah, it, it was just, it, and it survived like like twice from such uh, heavy hitting moves. Oh no! Oh yeah, it was Strix. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, it was. I was surprised that uh, that Vivorion was able to to take on three Mons and survive in the long run. He even had pretty good. He had even good switch ups, uh, switch ins, good coverage in order to take on Trig. It was just too much for Trig to uh, keep keep it up, especially with his misplays. Um. I don't know. It, he could have reserved the 6L, but I could understand, like, uh, keeping, uh, sacking one Mon in order to, uh, to keep the other Mons, uh, well, uh, well reserved in HP to able to sweep in the late game. So, is, is there anything else you say? About, uh, how Steven played? Uh, no, uh, except... Yeah, uh, very well, uh, you know defensively as he should have and he played it as as passes as he should have I don't think he made many mistakes um overall he had great coverage he had coverage for about everything he knew how to how he wanted to handle every situation it worked out in the long run for him so I fought him for that um just congrats Steven and keep going forward the way you're playing that match. You played it phenomenal, bro. And I expect to see a lot more. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and the three thing is the reason why I didn't put uh, Steven at number at number nine is because of how DJ of the Chelsea Fellstingers defeated the uh, Brennan and the Salt Lake City Swamperts. A, a player who who has won seven games in a row and lost to this up and coming play, uh, player, and I I'm actually surprised and I'm pretty proud of how, how this game went. Um, the the very first the very first turn, the very first turn, really no the very first four turns really determined this game. Losing uh using Crocodile as the lead. To threaten the Needle King was smart, but but also bold because of how uh, he had Crocodile um, not as a scarf user. So if Needle King was scarf and probably use Ice Beam, it probably O code um, Crocodile. But surprisingly enough, the Needle King stayed in and used Stealth Rocks while. Crocodile took the kill, taking down one of his uh, one of Brennan's biggest threats against his team. And then after that, not only did uh, he was able to bring in uh, Mega uh, no Rotom Mo uh, on alone Nine Tails when he set up the screen uh, the screens of the Royal Veil, he was able to defog him, pre preserve the Rotom at, at later on in the game. And able to bring in Blacephalon to take down the um, the Alolan Nine Tails after breaking through Dark Pulse and able to take it down. Two uh, sacrificing the Blacephalon for two big threatening Mons was a one of the biggest uh, outcomes of this game that made uh, that helped DJ win the game in the long run. Uh, he was able to 1v1 the Mega Charizard X with Togekiss near the end when he, uh, when, uh, Mega Charizard was trying to stall with, uh, Roos, in which, uh, Togekiss was just keep on clicking on that Dazzling Gleam, uh, dropping that HP down, forcing the Mega Charizard to just click Flare Blitz to take itself down while taking down, uh, Togekiss. And he was, uh, he was also kept up the momentum relatively well as well uh, throughout the game, keeping up with uh, Brandon switchins and uh, and 
prevent from uh, Mega Charizard X from setting up, uh, especially with his Roar Suicune, um, and able to bring down Rotom Wash near the end, chipping it down with Burn and Scald, allowing a burnt uh, Crocodile, which was kind of disappointing that it was it got burnt, but nonetheless. Uh, even it, uh, if it was burned, it was able to take down uh, Rotom Wash before I even had a chance to click Hydro Pump, allowing him to win with a 1 0 win. A very close game. Um, I, I am very prou proud of DJ winning this game. Uh, do you have anything to say about it? Uh, I've been naked to watch this match. I, I was looking over the, the codes and I was like, what? what? DJ won? Um, I wouldn't doubt it that DJ did pull through. DJ has truly been improving as a player. We've seen his... Like, just from week one to, to, to now, how much he's grown is... It's incredible. I, I'm really loving this new DJ. Um, he's He almost took me down to take down Brennan out of this guy's reach to tell you the truth I, I would say to arthur matt uh mark all those guys all the former ldo champions are obviously scared of this guy this guy be one of the next champions he could most definitely bring it back and maybe even squeeze into the playoffs but that's to be determined and now let's move on to the top eight and first up, we have uh, Jetman 99, aka Jesse, uh, of, of the Outback Kamala. And I had to agree with you from earlier when you mentioned about uh, the misclick with Toxic with Regice on Volcarona. That kind of forced him to lose uh, his Regice on the Volcarona for, uh, and allowing it to set up. But even if after the setup he was able to take it down with Darmanitan, um, I don't think he was even expecting physical Latios or even having uh, Lati having Latios learning Sucker Punch as well to take down his uh, Mega Alakazam. But he did play relatively well. He was able to um, outplay the Magnazone and the Ditto whenever uh, they... Uh, they're switching into the Tapu Fini um, so that Tapu Fini just clicks Nature's Madness, drop it to like a decently amount of HP, and take it down with uh, either Moonblast or, uh, or Surf uh, from Tapu Fini. And near the end of the game, even after, uh, after most of his monsters were down, he still had... Uh, Masquerade, he was able to set up and he was able to take down both uh, the Latias and the Megalopony. And I would say that he played relatively well after the, the mixed click of the uh, of the Toxic Mist click. Uh, yeah, for the Outback Kamalas, all I have to mention really is um, he was able to yeah. get his group back after such a a rough start towards what the now? beginning of the match. Thank you break, as I was uh, mentioning, Shay okay, not one... having the best coverage. I'll overall. take the trash out. Yeah. Yeah. But Jesse has proven he's, he, he can compete. It's, that's no lie there. Um, it's just at moments he might fluster in some sense. I understand. So, uh, you know, his brain was just still processing and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm still glad that uh, towards the end, like after the two misclicks, he was like, okay, hold up. I need to get my head back in the game. He was able to get his head back in the game. Mm -hmm. um, he knew his Armanitan was the only way to take the for Corona. I don't think he had any other checks besides that. And... Say. The quiver dance was really nice. I, I think he, he he played it right where that Shay does not bring rocks or any entry hazards. 
was able to get match green in super clean mm -hmm. with the focus sash. He knew he was going to be able to take any hit, get that quick dance off, just sweep if there was no make a little punny or any priority in that sense. So I, I, I got to congrats Jesse on that part. He played there very well, my dude, and keep going forward with that. I wholeheartedly agree on that. And now let's move on to Mark and uh, the Arizona Volcaronas at number seven. Uh, when he was playing, uh, play, uh, when Mark was playing, I noticed that that uh, during one of his turns, he had this uh, switch out Halucha after getting a Grassy Seed Unburden boost, and that kind of that kind of uh, worried me a bit. But near the end, I was surprised how well he was able to keep uh, his momentum momentum after after that. He had the full switch with uh, with uh, Jolteon. He wasn't. I don't think he was too uh, afraid of clicking it, especially with uh, Lando up on uh, on the field. Uh, a good tech with uh, screens with Zatu to be able to prevent from anything from breaking through, except for the fact that Tapu Vu went down uh, from a Z. A, a, a fly MZ from Landorus, but that didn't stop him. That didn't really stop him from like switching into Entei and clicking Sacred uh, Banish Sacred Fire, Bandit uh, E Speed, and take it down uh, chip after chip on every Mon. And especially the fact that he had the first turn of uh, when uh, Clefly ta uh, Toxic. Jolteon, it was a very good. It allowed uh, Mark to use it, use it as a good switch in into Klefki, so he prevent from toxic toxicing uh, any other Mon that. He, uh, so I would say that in the long run, I would say he did keep it uh, keep the memento flowing and brought the win. Even though I still think he would have lost with that Omni boosted Mega Charizard Y, but I don't know. I, I'm 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 glad that he was able to bring it back in the in the long run. Is there anything you want to say about how uh, Mark played? I don't think you realize this, man. I, I didn't realize it until I was watching the video. Plus one Mega Gyarados, and you took down the lid again. I know you forgot. You probably forgot. No, I mentioned I mentioned it, but You're I didn't mention no the longer. Mega Gyarados that uh, taking that out. But I did mention like about uh, Lilligant like... being sacked uh, by, uh, for the plus one Mega Gyarados, which kind of like surprised me. And then he brought in Klefki. So remember, Prankster no longer works on Dark types. Mm -hmm. You could have got a six on. Yo, this guy had nothing else for your team. Nothing. It would have been an easy 6-0. You missed it. Like, it was in your face. I was like, no! Just pay attention to details. I, I think it was on things. I, I understand it was probably on Showdown. So Showdown, I know it's, it's frustrating sometimes. Stuff yeah. like that. But, dude, like, really? You could have got a 6-0. And you really not capitalizing on that could have actually cost you the game. So you got to be careful when you make plays like that. You got to, um, especially for playoffs, you need to be at like legit on a, like 200% of your game. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, yeah, for sure. And now let's move on to me and the Victorville Victinis. Uh, so, when I was playing, I expected Zygarde, I expected RK9 to be in the, uh, in the, in, uh, in Brandon's team, and he didn't bring either of them, and I was like, this is going to be an interesting game, because I was what? mostly, pre yes, I was mostly prepped to uh, take down both the Zygarde and the RK9. But he never brought either of them, and I, and I was like, I was surprised. Um, th 
throughout the game, I was I was questioning some of it, uh, Brandon's moves, but I still kept it cool. I had Toxic on uh, Gliscor for anything that switches in. I wasn't expecting the switch in with Sableye when it was not Mega Evolved. So I got a free Toxic on it, so it lay able to uh, allow me to 1v1 it uh, with Gliscor. So I was very, I was very happy about that. Um, and then I don't know. I should, I could have played better with uh, keeping Jellison a bit more healthy uh, when it was battling against the uh, the Ar Articuno. I could have switched. I should, I could have kept. Uh, um, Cobalion in and clicked Iron Head on it to preserve uh, Jellicent's uh, HP, but I didn't. That costed a Jellicent. Uh, it it costed Jellicent overall. And throughout the game, I was kind of worried uh, about Rhydon because I only saw three moves, which were Hammer Hammer Arm, Earthquake, and Stealth Rocks. I didn't know what this last move was. It was probably rocks, uh, like a rock stab move, but I was also thinking about, hmm, I think he may have Ice Punch. So I was very worried about switching in Gliscor when Rhydon was out. So that, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have sacked uh, Incineroar. And I was switching into Gliscor and preserved like a 4-0, but I didn't and ended up getting a 3-0. But, um... I also kept up the momentum, always making sure that none of his mons were able to either set up or or overall just uh, attacking overall uh, and uh, ruining the momentum that I was having, uh, especially when I took down uh, the Galvantula with Cobalion. I was surprised he didn't have Thunder as well. so. I don't know. It. I was surprised that I was able to win this game, despite the fact my prep was more towards Zygarde. So and I didn't even use uh, Mega Audino, and I had it all prepped up for it uh, for the for the Zygarde too. So I don't know. Squid, do you have anything to say about how I played? I played it very well, man. I think I really liked that how. You really kept Cabalion alive. You, you knew Cabalion was such a huge factor for this game. Um, you second guessed yourself. Um, you said, you know what, I'm just going to knock off an Ebolite from right on. He over predicted and it got you a free kill on Jirachi. Mm -hmm. uh, and stuff like that. Just like simple, you're just playing the game. You're playing what's in front of you. Uh, your opponent's kind of like trying to make reads, and you're just there. It's, I don't know. Oh, that's the word I'm looking for. It. Um, relaxing, taking a sip of tea. Like, dude, it's not that serious. But I think um, from the beginning, you just played it well. You had the value on lead. You, you read his lead perfectly. Perfect. You got your rocks up. You knew rocks were going to be crucial. Mm -hmm. uh, he kind of messed up. I think he did not make his particle odd HP, so like, it never had the chance to live two rock entries, so like, that was yeah. awesome, that went in your favor. But overall, you played it well, you had, you had the prep, and your prep showed off, it really did. Just to say, like, truth, you had it, man. Alright, thank you. Um, Alright, so... Let's move on to number five, uh, Matt, Mega Matt, and the uh, Winpeg Jellicent. Uh, he surprisingly, uh, I was surprised on the first on his first lead being Mega Sharpedo and Mega S uh, and, Re and Slowbro, and I was like, hmm, I could see an easy uh, crunch uh, landing here, but then. He didn't go for the crunch and went for liquidation, which, in my opinion, I, I thought that was a misclick. I, I, I assume it was a misclick. Um, but after that, he kept the momentum when um, when Venusaur came in with by clicking crunch, and it it really 
softened it to a point that even when Mega Evolving, it wouldn't survive from uh, Psychic Fangs. So, good job on that. A good job on uh, on capitalizing on on uh, his momentum on Alejandro's m losing momentum in his core with the key berry Registeel with Thunder Wave and Earthquake to break down the um, the Heatran, and I was like, "Wow, that's that's like new level of." A predicting uh, uh, on sets um, and then when he brought in the uh, the Raikou and when I saw sub but saw that uh, Alejandro switch out I was like this might be game because he said uh, because Matt ended up clicking calm mine multiple times I mean I think t once if not twice and it was able to click shadow ball and just he was mainly clicking shadow ball throughout that the entire time and it and even from that plus one uh or if i'm if i'm mistaken it was plus one uh and the special defense it, it survived from tornadoes therian forms uh z heat wave and still took it out so i'm surprised that, uh, that matt won to be honest, I think he was he won by clicking buttons, but other than that, I think he did relatively well. He capitalized on the on the switch-ins that Alejandro was doing, and was able to break down uh, Alejandro's team all overall. Uh, Squid, do you have anything to say about uh, Matt and how he he played through his match? Uh, this is also a match I did not watch. All right, right, right. Yeah, so. all right. But um. Yeah, good job, Matt, on clicking buttons. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to number four, which is uh, Brennan, aka uh, Thumb Brother Two, and the Salt Lake City Swampers. Now, I kind of understand that rocks are important, but at the same time, you gotta be careful on the lead, uh, on your speed, on speed coverage uh, uh, if you have needle king and if you expect him to have crocodile would you run choice scarf that's uh, it's uh, or would you try to run more of a bulkier needle king set to and are you able to safely put in rocks but i don't think he had a uh, set the uh, needle king to a bulky standpoint so it costed it really costed him from uh, winning the game when he lost Needle King, and also losing nine t low nine tails on the Blissepalon. I do give him props for using Dark Pulse on the uh, on the low nine tails, but still, losing the Aurora Veil really crippled uh, rip crippled your team. He did uh, able to bring down the Buzzwell with the Waterium Z because Buzzwell was was a very big problem when it took down two year bonds it, it, it just clicked earthquake and it just got uh got what it wanted so um i don't know it but you but i do have to uh um commend you for keeping the momentum going you kept the momentum even after having a f uh being behind by one or two kill kill uh kills you were able to keep the momentum. You kept. You were ensuring that no matter what, that Mega Charizard Y, I mean Charizard X and um, Rotom Wash stay alive to able to break down the remaining Mons that G DJ had. But in the end, it was hard for uh, for you to bring it back, and I understand. So, yeah, this this game. This game overall was very, very close, I would say. So, uh, and also the miss on the Hydro Pump really sucked uh, because chip on, on a Mon really, really counts. But it really hurt. It hurts whenever you're using a move like that on a pressure Mon such as Suicune. Um, 
yeah it was, it was just a very good game I would say all right now I still had to watch it but I caught <laughs> clips of it and I saw how how I had to say but it is a, it's a game worth watching it's a game worth watching for sure but now let's move on to your game let's go ahead Toronto to the hardest thing to discuss uh RNG sucks <laughs> am I right <laughs> Yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> to be honest, if it was if without the RNG, you would have had a one. You would have won with a two O, or one O. I, I it, either or, you would have won because you had the DNC in the back. You had the Porygon, probably well invested in special defense to tank on uh, um, the uh, the Kieran Black. Especially if it was modest. Uh, another thing is is that you had Z Volt on Geyser, which was pretty good. It was able to take down a Magic Mega Pidgeot. It, you were able to survive a a, a a hit from Mega Pidgeot as well from Hurricane. And you had Thank the tools. You, you did have. You literally had the tools to take out all of his threats. And RG came in and ruined it. Uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> uh, dude, I think you said it all. There's enough with the RNG. It's really, that's what it came down to. Yeah. I have to. Yeah, it was all about RNG. Um, but I do commend you that you were able to take down Rakranid. That. That actually made a difference because if it had, uh, if it didn't lay out sticky web, it would have kind of slowed your mods. Well, it wouldn't really slow down your mods since most of your mods were relatively slow, except for uh, uh, Tornado's Therian. So that's not know. affected by sticky webs. Yeah, I, I think it was just pretty. Uh, it was an obvious kind of read. My only rock setter was the anti. So in order for him to stop my rocks, would simply leave off with his bird like that. But I did well. Yeah. All right. I hope I did. Oh, I think you did. Uh, but let's move on to um to number two. Um, it was hard to decide whether or not Carlos or or uh, the Lazy Ghost would have been uh, number one, but. I pretty much did this based off on how interesting the games went, so I put Carlos as number two because of how interesting <laughs> your game went with uh, with the Lazy Ghost uh, Squid. So um, going for Carlos, I give him props with his prep. He made the game very quick. He had Scarf of All to take down the uh, the trio. He had Icy Wind Metagross, surprisingly enough to uh, probably for the prep for uh, Mega uh, Gardevoir and they able to make it slow and uh, prevent it from causing tr trouble. Uh, he had Rocky Helmet Zapdos which really crippled uh, Jordan's Talonflame when it had, when it had to click uh, Flare Blitz and also had life or causing it to take it uh, be probably uh, probably his uh, chance of uh, bringing it back um, oh no uh, I also uh, same thing with uh, Steven I would say that your win con uh, to keep the preserve the 6-0 you could have kept the Zapdos alive maybe had uh, Rooster and whatnot, but I kind of understand when Cartana is on the field and you, you worried about uh, what's uh, Mon to bring in. So I understand that uh, of uh, sacking the Zapdos, but it worked out near the end when you were able to take down the, the Cartana with the. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, 
make a houndoom if I'm not mistaken. But all in all, uh, you were able to bring it back in, especially with the houndoom. It was well prepped with, uh, with HP ice to take down the Garchomp. So I, I commend you on, on those on those uh, points. Do you have anything to say? Because prep was on point. On point, especially with the fact that I know he's just me since I think he's already clinched playoffs. Mm -hmm. That uh, Miltank was huge. I thought that was beautiful. Like, even through a crit, nothing. So I was like, wow. Like, and uh, how much he had invested on that Miltank. I, I think he had um, all the prep he needed. Like, he had Icy Wind. I see win for the Garchomp. To catch that Garchomp off guard, he had a lot of good prep. That's why I love um, Carlos. Carlos really knows what he's doing out there on the field. He knows what he's bringing every week. Um, he was fortunate to get to within six turns, which was like, that's a 33% chance, my dude. That's like ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, so nice for you to get that. Um, you let off right. It was a bad lead. Between the Dugtrio and Savali. That was probably your best lead. And RNG paid, paid it off. Said, great lead, here you go, crit. So that worked nice in your favor. Uh, but really, overall, you had a very well balanced team to, to get the W this week. So congrats on that, my dude. And keep going forward. This playoffs is almost here, and I want to keep you back. Uh, most definitely, because I, I can see that Carlos. Even clenching uh, playoffs, he's not gonna back down. He's gonna make sure he's gonna prep for everyone. So I'm looking forward to battling him at the end of the week uh, of the season. So look forward to that, Carlos. <laughs> and I'm because I'm looking forward to it. Um, now for Arthur, uh, uh, Lazy Ghost of uh, the Bur uh, Birmingham Aaron. Uh, like I mentioned before, it all came down to RNG. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I would say that, um, uh, out of anything, having a unique set of Quagsire, probably a special defensive set with Curse, Ice Punch, and Rest Talk. So, I would, uh, commend you on that. Also, having coverage with Agent Power with Tangro was, uh, pretty good as well. And Specs Curum able to uh, break down some of his wall, uh, some Squid's walls, but also in the aspe aspect of bringing it back through RNG, through Freeze, and Crits. So I don't know. <laughs> Other than that, uh, I think Arthur played the best he could in that game, and it was all down to the the whole hacks so i think he he just he played it smart by preserving his carry room as the last mod had it been other any other mod i probably could have easily gone through but since it was carry room just i could have handled it but just the rng it's just <laughs> rng just needs to stop yeah but uh, that's it's the game we play and it's nothing we can do about it. Uh, all right, and that should be it. That is everything uh, to go through for this of uh, week twelve of of LDL season seven. Now, before we announce the battle of the week of week twelve, I want to announce the uh, battle of the week for week eleven. And that would be Jordan versus Matt, where Jordan won his game. So I congratulate Jordan because of how he was able to use his hyper offensive team of speed to able to take down Matt and how well he was able to prep. The one thing that I would say when I watched this game was how Doug Trio survived a super effective move Th that one that really shocked me i was like okay this guy sh uh, should deserve this 
So congratulations to Jordan for winning the battle of the week for week 11. Uh, and now for the week 12, you probably would have heard it through how proud I was uh, from watching it. But I had to give out the win to DJ for his battle against uh, Brandon. I congratulations uh, DJ for bringing in such a very clutch and very close game uh, out of all the battles of week 12. So congratulations on winning uh, the battle of the week. And that should be about it. Is is that is there anything else you want to say before we close out, Squid? As you're amazing, stay blazing, Squid out. All right, and this is this is Spartan Two Seventy Five signing off. <laughs>